Hello world, my name is Victor Engelmann and in this video I'm going to show you how to use multi-threading using uh, POSIX threads. And um, yeah, why should you use multi-threading? Um, well, it depends. When you, um, when you write classical programs uh, that don't have uh, um, a, a graphical user interface, for example, then um, you might not even need multi-threading, but um, yeah, when you have uh, situations like uh, network communication, for example, or graphical user interfaces, uh, things can just happen asynchronously. You know, a, a user might uh, move the mouse or click uh, click the mouse or press a button at a time when you don't expect them to. And um, yeah, that's uh, why you should use multi-threading um, so that all the different uh, sources of events can be managed by different threads and uh, then these threads have to communicate with each other. Um, but uh, yeah, the main reason why you should use it is um, when you have things that can happen asynchronously and um, uh, yeah, like for example, different event sources like uh, different network uh, connections uh, that can send data at different times, for example. Okay, so let's begin. I will create a text file, test.cpp, and also a make file. Then I will run my favorite text editor, Kate. Okay. Now, um, when you want to use threads, at least POSIX threads. I mean, uh, that's uh, threads that you have on all Unix systems like uh, Linux and uh, all the different uh, uh, Unix systems from HP and uh, whoever. Um, also Mac OS is a Unix, uh, BSD is a Unix. And uh, yeah, the only thing that isn't a Unix these days is Windows, And <laughs> but it's similar enough. So uh, I think when you've watched this video, you will uh, be able to do multi-threading on Windows also. Okay, the first thing that you need is you need to include pthread.h. Okay. Good. Now, um, inside my main. Um, yeah, when uh, we would uh, first need to really start different threads. And um, when you start a thread, you need to give it a function pointer to tell it, uh, hey, this is what this thread is supposed to do now. Okay. But uh, before you can do that, you first need to, um, um, to create an, an object I mean, this, is, this isn't exactly an object in the sense of, uh, of object-oriented programming. Uh, uh, internally, uh, we are just creating integers and uh, they will be uh, carrying an, uh, a handle to a thread, okay? So, so uh, this is uh, the type pthread t. Uh, but that's just uh, type deft, I think, or defined as an int. Um, I will just create thread A and thread B. But again, these are just handles, okay? So, um, so just because you have uh, created these now uh, doesn't mean that anything is running yet. Um, so uh, to actually start a thread, you need to call pthread create. And the first parameter it gets is one of these handles, thread A, but uh, yeah, the, the address of thread A so that it can, uh, can write the handle um, into that. The second parameter is, um, yeah, you can, um, you can pass a structure um, that defines some uh, some attributes for the thread, but uh, normally you can just pass null here. And, uh, or in C++ case, you would use 
null pointer. Then um, the third parameter is the function pointer. So um, function a, for example, and then I need to define this function. And uh, yeah, this this is um, the um, the signature that uh, a function must have to uh, be legal for pthread create. So it must return a void pointer, and it must take a void pointer. Okay, but uh, you might uh, just pass null pointer here, and uh, or, uh, you might return null pointer here. Maybe you need to uh, return something different, but uh, uh, for now I will just say null pointer. And um, yeah, the fourth parameter that you pass to pthread create is something that will then be passed to this arc here. So for example, I can use null pointer, then this arc here will just be null pointer. Okay, so the thing that you pass here is going to become the parameter of this uh, function call here. Okay. Okay. Now this function just does something. It prints a in an infinite loop, and then we'll do the same thing, function b, which will print fun uh, b infinitely. And I will also create a thread for that using the second thread handle and the second function. Okay. But now let's make a make file for that. So we run G++. Um, we generate the, uh, the target file test and uh, use test CPP as input. And uh, what we also need to do is, um, now this, this is something that has changed recently. Um, in uh, just a few years ago, you would have to say dash LP thread, um, which would tell G++ that you'd want to link against a library called pthread. But uh, yeah, some time down the line, um, they've decided that um, they wanted uh, multi-threading to be more like a feature of the language. So uh, so you're not really supposed to think of this like, uh, hey, there's a library called libpthread.so um, and I'm linking against that. Um, they said uh, this is more like a feature that I want to turn on using dash pthread. And um, yeah, how the compiler does that internally is not my problem, okay? And uh, the compiler is allowed to do that by linking against a library called libpthread.so or by any other means, but uh, that's not my business. Okay, let's see if that runs. Okay, this runs. Um, okay, it has printed some A's, some B's, uh, but then it stopped. Why did it stop? Well, because uh, the main function has ended. Um, and then when the main function ends, all the threads are killed. Um, so we might uh, want to put something like while true here. And uh, yeah, maybe do something like uh, read a string also. And 
and then we would need, uh, I think, algorithm. Dot h. Okay, I think this is how uh, that would work. And then, uh, yeah, we might uh, test here something like uh, while input is not equal to quit or something. Okay, algorithm.h was apparently wrong. Um, but I've uh, looked it up. Uh, this get line isn't defined in an algorithm header anyway, so. Standard get line doesn't take a pointer to a string, it takes an L value reference, so we don't need to explicitly turn this into a pointer. Okay, make. Okay, now it works. And yeah, now uh, um, it prints A's and B's all over the place. And uh, I just typed quit and enter. And this has uh, actually um, terminated the whole thing, although you couldn't uh, see me typing it uh, into the screen because every letter would disappear immediately. But uh, yeah, since this was running on a different thread here, uh, this was still uh, this still worked. Okay, um, now um, so now we have a way to start. A thread um, but uh, right now we just the, the threads just end because we uh, we kill the whole program but uh, of course there are certainly circumstances where you want to end a thread and uh, without ending the program so um, so the way you do that is um, well you, you need the um, the thread to finish in some way. So, uh, so this uh, running infinitely here is uh, not really what you need to do for that. Um, I will just uh, define a, a boolean here, true, and here say while running, while running okay so by setting this to false we can now tell these two threads to stop okay so if we quit here we will then uh, set running to false okay um, but um, yeah, imagine that uh, one of the threads is now st still doing something very long and um, uh, maybe writing a file. And if you just end the program, the thread is killed and uh, your file is invalid or something like that. So, um, so just uh, telling the thread to end and then killing the program and killing the threads um, might not be the ideal thing that you want to do because you might want to wait for the thread to actually end. And to do that, um, you use pthread join. And here you pass the uh, thread handle again, thread A, but this time not as a pointer, you know, because uh, here pthread create would um, uh, would set the variable to some uh, to some index, and uh, but here we we only need to tell pthread join, hey we want to uh, end this or we want to wait for this thread, and um, yeah the second parameter to pthread join is um, a 
pointer to some void pointer. Okay, so we um, I create a, a void pointer here, foo, and uh, now I can pass a reference to that pointer, and then um, this pointer will be set to the return value that uh, you've returned from the uh, from this thread function. Okay, so if I mean I, I return null pointer here, so if I do this, uh, then I will get null pointer in foo. But uh, yeah, you might return something from uh, from a thread. You know, it's not hard to imagine a situation where you start a thread to uh, compute something, and then um, like this, you can get the result from the thread. Okay, good. Um, if you don't want to take a result, you can also pass null pointer here. Then uh, whatever is returned here is just not going to be returned. But uh, if you start, uh, if you keep starting threads, ending threads, starting threads, ending threads, and never uh, taking uh, the re the return values of these threads, uh, you might have a um, you might have a, a memory leak. So it might be a good idea to always uh, pass foo and then delete foo. So uh, if you return something uh, on the heap, then uh, you can uh, you can prevent a, a memory leak by uh, taking whatever you get and deleting it. Okay, anyhow. Um, Okay, let's run this now. Uh, maybe have some status message here. Okay, it's running again. I type quit again, waiting for threads to end. And okay, the threads have ended very fast, but uh, so there's no more A's and B's in between. Um, but uh, yeah, okay, so uh, this is still pretty good. So um, now as an object-oriented programmer, I would normally wrap these things in a class, but uh, for simplicity's sake, I will not do that right now. Um, but I want to talk about something else. Um, let's say your um, um, your threads are doing some things. Like let's say so the first thread prints hello over and over again. And the second thread keeps printing world. Okay. And um, um, yeah, to, to provoke a problem that uh, you will get. Put some uh, some delays here. Now, um, okay. So I've uh, run this for a while, and yeah, look at uh, the stuff that you see here. You have uh, W O R L D and H E L L O. It's just uh, cobbled together, you know, the, the 
characters are just all over the place. Um, um, so, so you don't have hello and world and hello, 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 world, world, world. Um, the characters are just um, completely uh, randomly uh, uh, distributed. So, um, because the thing is, uh, yeah, this thread might be printing H and E, and then this thread might be taking over and print W and O, and then this one might take over again, print uh, LL, and then this might take over again, print RL, and so on. Okay, that's uh, uh, that's why um, you have these characters so uh, so randomly in here, and um, that's a problem uh, called uh, thread synchronization, because uh, the thing is uh, that your threads can disturb each other. And that's a really big problem. I mean, this, this happens when mul uh, multiple threads access the same resources uh, in an order that you might not want. Like uh, a very classical example is um, uh, you might have an int uh, for iterations and uh, in your thread functions, you might uh, increase this integer like okay iterations equals iterations plus plus one okay so um, so maybe you want to know how often has uh, have the uh, these uh, loops been iterated right but uh, the thing about this is um, that internally um, this is not a so-called atomic operation. So what happens internally is um, that first you compute iterations plus one, store that in some temporary location, and then copy that temporary location back to the iterations variable. Okay. And the problem that you now get is it could happen that the first, um, let's say iterations is currently at uh, 1000, okay? Now the first thread takes this 1000, adds one, has temp equals 1001. Now the other thread, um, the technical term is preempts uh, the first thread. So now this thread takes over and now this thread also computes 1000 plus one. So uh, because uh, iterations hasn't been changed yet, so it's still at 1000. Now this one sets this temp, maybe let's call it temp two to make it more clear. Um, this here sets temp two to 1001. And now this um, thread takes over again, sets iterations to 1001. And then this one also um, sets iterations to 1001. So the problem is that, um, that down here, um, I've used an old content of the, of the variable because the new content um, hasn't been written yet. Okay. So, um, so this here should be 1002. Right, because this one should set it to 1001, and then this code down here should set it to 1002. But because this happened um, after the old value has already been read, but not the new value been written, uh, this has now also taken the old value, and um, uh, therefore the, no the new value is not correct anymore. Okay, that's uh, called thread synchronization because you don't want these things to happen uh, out of order you know you want um, you want this to happen as one thing and um, these two things should not be interrupted by uh, this code here and to prevent this from happening um, you need something called a mutex um, a mutex 
stands for mutual exclusion. Um, and you can uh, use that to, to define regions of your code um, to be mutually exclusive. Okay, uh, you do this like this. Um, you create a mutex p thread mutex t. I'll call it mtx, and this needs to be uh, initialized with the uh, preprocessor macro p thread mutex initializer. Uh, this has a very, very technical explanation um, and uh, I don't want to go into why you need to set it like this. Um, but yeah, when you have that mutex, um, you can then uh, call p thread mutex in it. which gets a pointer to this mutex and a pointer to um, some additional attributes. Um, again, typically you can uh, just use null pointer and uh, you'll, you'll be fine. Um, okay, so now the mutex is initialized. And at the end of the program, you need to uh, destroy it. Okay, and this also gets a pointer to the mutex. Okay, so now we have this mutex. Um, how can we now uh, use this mutex? Um, imagine a mutex to be something like a pen. Okay, um, you might know this whole concept from, um, from large meetings when everybody is talking at the same time and you want to prevent that. Uh, you might pick just some token like a pen and say only the person who holds the pen is allowed to talk. Okay, and this is basically a mutex. So, uh, so only one thread at a time is allowed to hold this mutex. And um, then you, inside your code, you can basically say, hey, this part of the code is only allowed to run when you have this mutex. Okay, and you do that using p thread mutex lock which gets a pointer to the mutex again and then at the end of the code p thread mutex unlock okay I'll throw this out because this was just for an explanation okay um, of course, if if you if your code just doesn't abide to this stuff, then uh, you have no way to force it. But uh, yeah, you you need to be very precise um, about uh, where which mutex is allowed to be held because um, something that that can happen is a so-called cycle lock. So you might hold one mutex and wait for another mutex you know if you you could have uh, multiple mutexes and uh, already have one and then try to lock another one but this other one might be held by uh, a different thread and this thread might be waiting for your mutex and then you have a so-called cycle lock because these uh, threads will then wait for each other forever so uh, but okay um, you really need to be very cautious with uh, multi-threading and uh, thread synchronization. So, okay. So this is now a so-called critical region. Um, this is only allowed to run while I have the mutex. And down here, I give the mutex back. And here I'm only allowed to, um, um, to progress when I have the mutex. And down here, I give it back. And uh, it can still happen that uh, this runs through twice. So you, so you have the mutex, you give it back, you take it again, right world again, give it back, and then 
function a takes a mutex, writes hello, puts it back, and so on. Okay, let's try this. Ah, there's some hello, 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 world, world, world. So, uh, so yeah, this uh, really shows you that um, now um, these two regions cannot uh, overlap anymore. So these these different outputs here cannot interrupt each other anymore. Now there's all sorts of other interesting corner cases. Um, like for example, um, you might want uh, one thread to wait for something to happen and uh, another thread doing something and then sending an information to the first thread uh, to tell it, hey, this has happened now. Um, you would do that with a so-called condition variable. And, um, and then you get all sorts of different use cases where you hold this uh, mutex and release that mutex and wait for this condition variable. Um, and uh, yeah, sometimes you have this, the problem that uh, you again have this little problematic gap where you have already done this and uh, you want to do this next, but then uh, if, if um, this doesn't happen immediately after that, you might get a problem. Like for example, the first thread tells the second thread, hey, I'm, I'm waiting for this to happen, okay? And now maybe this already happens while between uh, the moment when the first thread says, I'm, I want you to do this, the second thread already says, okay, I'm done. And now the first thread is waiting for the second thread to uh, to be done. But since it's already done what it uh, was supposed to do, uh, yeah, this waiting for the second thread uh, is not gonna terminate anymore. And yeah, there's all sorts of such weird corner cases. Um, and uh, I can only really um, tell you to get this book here, um, Programming with POSIX Threads by David Butenhoff. Um, this has the reputation of being the book about POSIX threads. And I absolutely agree. This is really the book about POSIX threads because um, David Butenhoff is actually one of the developers of POSIX threads. And, uh, and I mean, I'm good <laughs> at multi-threading, but this guy puts me to shame. Um, he, he, as I said, he's one of the developers and he has so many answers to problems that I wouldn't even have thought of. And uh, he also is very good at, at explaining them. Um, for example, he, he uses an image um, of a boat with three guys in it and uh, the boat has a hole. Now, uh, they can infinitely survive, although everybody needs to sleep uh, at some point by taking turns. And um, yeah, one person is allowed to sleep one person needs to row because they want to find land at some point and one person needs to have a bucket and uh, throw water out of the of the boat and uh, then these three uh, people have to synchronize uh, what they are doing you know and uh, if if this synchronization goes wrong maybe two of them are asleep and uh, uh, and then they drown okay so uh, yeah, really, I think this is this has really good explanations, and um, uh, I can really only advise you to get this book if you uh, if you're doing uh, multi-threading. And yeah, anyhow, uh, this is all I wanted to show you today. Uh, if you like this video, like it, share it, subscribe, and see you next time.